ओम अज्ञान तिमीरांधस्य ज्ञानांजन शलाखय चक्षोर उन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्य ददा स्वपदाक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुत पद कमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवांश श्री रूप साग्रजुक्त सह गण रघुनाता तम सजीव सद्वैत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्ता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुत देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछाकूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम नमा विष्णु पादा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातारिणे श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे रामाय राम भद्राय रामचंद्राय वेधसे रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीताय पते नम हरे कृष्ण बिफोर आई बिगिन आई वॉन्ट टू ऑफर माय ओबेसेंसेस एट द लोटस फीट ऑफ माय वेरी बिलवेड स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर at the lotus feet of all the disciples of shrila prabhupad at the lotus feet of his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shrila prabhupad and all the wonderful acharyas in our glorious brahma madva gaudiya rupanuga hmm? bhakti vinod bhakti siddhanta bhakti vedanta parampara my prostrated obeisances to adi kavi valmiki muni my obeisances to all the commentators all the great acharyas all the great devotees who are surrendered at the lotus feet of shri ram my obeisances at all the at the lotus feet of all the great sadhus who have led their life in rama bhakti in satya yuga treta yuga dwapar yuga in kali yuga in the past in the present and in the future my obeisances to all the great vaishnavas and vaishnavis in whose life the lotus feet of shri ramachandra is the only treasure the service to shri ram is the only aspiration the form of shri ram is the only goal the qualities of shri ram are the only feast for the heart the pastimes of shri ram are the only entertainment for the soul my obeisances to maryada purushottam shri ramachandra for kindly agreeing to come from his very busy schedule in the spiritual world into this world millions and millions of years ago to perform his very beautiful wonderful sweet yet um, heart wrenching and soul stirring pastimes which continue to entertain enlighten enrich the hearts of one and all the minds of one and all the ears of one and all my obeisances to each one of you for your spotless devotion by your auspicious presence here with your desire to hear about shri ram i am utterly undeserving utterly unqualified unworthy to be here on this day i feel like a crow which is uh, sitting on top of a roof all of you are very qualified all of you have studied heard spoken and read the ramayan so many times i don't feel um, as a proper fit here especially when so many exalted wonderful vaishnavas are present here um my speaking is like the the croaking of a frog or the cawing of a crow i don't have any knowledge about ramayan or about shastra i am in no way um, a knower of um, tatvas i cannot chant or recite or explain anything properly but all of you are kind enough to give me some opportunity 
the ramayan gives a lot of hope jayanta became a crow but still he attained the lotus feet of the lord and a crow which is always looked down upon in shastra as something which only picks dirt and garbage and flaws and faults is given the position of the speaker of ramayan in the ramayan as kakabhushundi so much so that even garuda comes and sits and listens from hmm, this great devotee of shri ram so from these two examples of kakasur that is jayanta uh, he should have been killed by shri ram but shri ram let him go just by taking one eye off and kakabhushundi we see although being a crow given a chance to speak shri ramayan uh, i am mustering a lot of courage and a um, lot of hope from these two examples all of you please offer your prayers blessings and best wishes may the right words come at the right time in the right spirit of service to the lotus feet of shri ram whatever mistakes may come through my mouth please kindly uh, correct them in your mind please kindly reconcile with senior vaishnavas Uh, please forgive me for my faults and whatever good may come which may give some pleasure to your heart is actually straight coming down the guru parampara i am simply being a wire medium i offer my obeisances to all of you once again vancha kalpataru kshetra krupa sindhu ke ayo chapatita nam bhavanintyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha the shrimad bhagavatam has very beautifully glorified shri ramachandra in the 11th canto as tyaktva sudustya jasure psita rajya lakshmim dharmishtha arya vachasa yadaga daranyam maya mrigam dayita ye psita manvadhavat vande maha purushate charanaravindam shri ramachandra has been described in this verse of the 11th canto and the the general understanding of this verse is tyaktva Sri Ramachandra gave up. What did he give up, or what did he give up? Tyaktva su dustyaja. He gave up something which was very, very difficult to give up. Tyaja dustyaja su dustyaja. Something which was very, very difficult to give up. So tyaktva, having given up something which was very difficult to give up, and what was that? Sura ipsita. Something that even Indra and the demigods will desire. Rajya Lakshmi. Uh, that is the the abode. of ayodhya the position the pada the the position the post of being the king of ayodhya overnight everything turned reversals came and the supreme lord shri ram without any frown or any shock with a smile on his face as he always has beautifully wonderfully has accepted this reversal to show all of us sama shatru cha mitre cha yatha mana apamana yo ho shita ushna sukha dukha krishna spoke in the bhagavad gita krishna is preaching about this philosophy but our shri ramachandra is practicing it shri ramachandra is showing it by personal example <clears throat> often times people ask is krishna better or shri ram better <laughs> the question is only not good because it is like comparing one fruit with the other both are fruits just the tastes are different shri ramachandra and shri krishna chandra in tatva they are bhagavat tatva they are uh, ishvara tatva they are both bhagavan they are both like fruits but the taste of the fruits may be different the taste of the mango is different the taste of the apple fruit is different the taste of orange is different they are all fruits but the taste is different the tastes are different so similarly shri ramachandra and shri krishna chandra shri gaura chandra they're all supreme lord but the rasa the flavor the mellow the taste varies just like on a on a on a plate we need all kind of preparations we need roti also we need sabji also we need dal also we need rice also uh, we need some curry also some savories also there was some salad also and some sweet also you can just take halwa 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 throughout the plate we need everything so similarly we need for our nourishment we need all kinds of tastes we need narsingha leela also we need krishna leela also we need gaur leela also we need ramchandra's ramayan leela also we need all of these pastimes the tastes are all different 
but fundamentally uh, one thing is common that is the spirit of devotion the spirit of surrender <clears throat> so we see some some similarity and some differences between shri krishna and shri ramachandra like we see krishna chandra in the 10th canto or in, in the krishna book we see the childhood pastimes of krishna are very greatly elaborated and sometimes every each pastime in the childhood can be explained for seven seven days also like putana can be explained for seven days or uh, trinavarta etc shakatasur childhood pastimes can be explained for a long long time but if you see in shri ramachandra's pastimes the childhood pastimes are not so discussed but adho rama tapovanadi gamanam it starts off with shri ramachandra's spirit of sacrifice tapovanadi gamanam going into the forest giving up the um, rajya lakshmi the position of being the king of all the opulences of ayodhya and going into the forest so it is a karunya rupam karuna karantam it is a um, description shri ramachandra's pastimes are description of um extreme reversals and extreme tolerance going through all of that teaching by personal example and such compassion such compassion so shri krishna he performs childhood pastimes and his pastimes are also later if you see in the in, in totality they cannot be imitated what about the rasali light cannot be imitated what about going into somebody's house and breaking butter pots and stealing cannot be imitated speaking lies like krishna does in a very sweet way to mother yashoda naham bhakshitavanam cannot be imitated krishna on the battlefield of kurukshetra giving arjuna different ways tricks and techniques by which he can uh, kill the opponent <laughs> all the different intricate nuances found in the mahabharat cannot be imitated but krishna's words must be accepted krishna's words and shri ramachandra's activities krishna's instructions and shri ramachandra's demonstrations these are the two things to be applied in in our life of course shri ramachandra's instructions also because it is maryada purushottama maryada means shri ramachandra always remains in the um, in the domain in the territory of proper rules and regulations in a naravat fashion in a in a way in a human like fashion which everyone can relate with but krishna dancing on the hoods of kaliya krishna <laughs> swallowing forest fire krishna showing the universe in his mouth krishna lifting up govardhan hill these are all superhuman pastimes superhuman when shri prabhupad used to be asked about krishna's rasalila prabhupad used to say first you lift up govardhan hill then you can talk about rasalila when someone would ask about lord shiva you know is, is is there some reference about lord shiva getting intoxicated in a in a tamasic way etc shila prabhupad would say first of all uh, th- that doesn't exist and even if you think that exists first you drink poison like lord shiva let, then let's talk about his intoxication and other things but shri ramachandra you see moves like a human being doesn't uh, do anything beyond um, the 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 extent of um, maryada something that every human being can follow in his life perfect son perfect husband perfect master perfect brother perfect student and disciple so krishna is leela purushottama and shri ramachandra is maryada purushottama so this question whether krishna is better or shri ramachandra is better so let's say there's a question let's ask a question if there is a if there is a debate between a devotee of krishna and a devotee of ram so who is going to win if this is the question that is asked if there is a debate between a devotee of krishna and a devotee of ram who is going to win only one person is going to win and it's very simple the audience the audience are going to win because when krishna's devotee and shri ramachandra's devotee they they have a debate and nobody is going to win between them because when they t- speak about tatva well shri ram and shri krishna are the same person and when you speak about rasa the devotee who is serving shri ram the rasa bhakti rasa that he is tasting he will feel that is the best and the devotee who is serving krishna the bhakti rasa that he tastes he will think that is the best so on the basis of rasa there is nothing conclusive because both are tasting the best 
And as far as Tattva is concerned, there's no difference between Ram and Krishna because they're both Bhagavad Tattva. So both are not going to win. But as they are talking, nectar is being churned out from both Krishna Leela and Ram Leela. And one thing is for sure, the audience wins. Because the audience is tasting Ram Katha and uh, Krishna Katha. So therefore, this is very important to understand that Sri Ramachandra came in Treta Yuga and Sri Krishna Chandra came in Dwapar Yuga. So before we get, so what do they stand for individually? Sri Krishna stands for love over duty. Love over duty. Hmm? Krishna is always flowing with love. <laughs> love for Mother Yashoda, love for Nanda Baba, love for his cows, love for his friends, love for the gopis, love for Srimati Radhika. So love over duty. Sometimes Krishna may forget his duties also. He was supposed to go to Mathura to release Devaki and Vasudev, but he was so lost in the loving pastimes in Vrindavan that Narad Muni had to come and remind him that you, ha you have appeared to kill Kamsa Maharaj and release Vasudev Maharaj and Devaki Rani. So Krishna forgot his duty of Prithvi Bhara Nasho Mukundaha of reducing the burden of Mother Earth. Because ultimately, why did Krishna come? Because the demigods went and prayed that the, the weight on Mother Earth's back is increasing because of the, the sins of the unsaintly kings. Uh, so then that's why Krishna came. But he forgot his duty. We could say the Bhagavata was forgotten because of his, uh, his Madhurya, sweetness, Madhurta. Hmm? So Krishna is love over duty. But Sri Ramachandra is duty over love. Even if he loves something, he's ready to, uh, you know, part with it because it is the duty. It is to set the right example. Hmm? So therefore, this is very important. <clears throat> Treta Yuga first and then Dwapar Yuga. So in Treta Yuga, the duty is given predominance over love. And in Dwapar Yuga, Krishna is saying love over duty, which means before we build Ras Mahal, Ras Mahal means um, the, the palace of sweetness like people want to hear krishna leela people want to hear uh, gopis and ras leela and all of these things which is rasa mahal it is the palace of rasa the palace of sweet love but before the ras mahal is built it is very important that the foundation the basis of siddhanta through ramayan is built first because if ramayan is not studied if the principles of ramayan the base the siddhanta the conclusive instructions from the Ramayana are not used as the base, then talking about uh, Krishna Leela and other things is just a hoax because fundamentally it is uh, Siddhanta from the Ramayana which makes one relatable in this world. And then uh, we can build on other things. Ramayana teaches, how, <laughs> Ramayana teaches us how to be a human first and then later Bhagavatam takes it to Prema Bhakti. Hmm? So we cannot, uh, even as devotees of Krishna, we cannot take the content of Ramayana out. We need it. We need to hear these things. We, one could say, I'm a Gaudiya Vaishnav. Oh, yes, for a Gaudiya Vaishnav to get onto the Rasa Mahal of Braja Leela, first the Siddhanta of Ramayana is very important. Hmm? So it is very, very important to know that Sri Ramachandra, the, 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 the personal conduct and the example that he set is very, very important. So back to the words from the Bhagavatam. Tyaktva sudustyaja surepsita rajya lakshmim. Sri Ramachandra gave it up. Gave up Ayodhya. Why? Dharmishtha. Because he was very fixed up in dharma. Overnight reversal. And Sri Ramachandra gave it up. Dharmishtha. Being completely fixed in dharma. Dharma to his mother. Dharma to his father. As, as his duty as an individual. Dharmishtha Arya Vachasa, by the words of his superior, by his parents' word, Yad Agad Aranyam, Sri Ramachandra walked into the Aranyam, he went into the forest. And there, Mayamrigam, the golden deer, Daitaya Ipsitam, that which was desired by his Daita, Mother Sita, Anvadhavat, Sri Ramachandra ran behind that golden deer. Vande Mahapurushate Charanaravindam, at the lotus feet of that Sri Ram, whose lotus feet uh, uh, ran behind the golden deer. To that Sri Ramachandra, I offer my obeisances. It's a very great thing to say, I offer my obeisances to the lotus feet of that Ram uh, who ran behind the golden deer. Why? Because generally, to be free from Maya, 
<laughs> it's very interesting. To be free from Maya, we have to run towards the lotus feet of Krishna. We have to run towards the lotus feet of Bhagavan. Only then we'll be free from Maya. But this is a very interesting example that a person in an illusory form as Maya is coming in front of Ram and Ram is running behind. So this gives a lot of hope to the devotee that Sri Ram is not telling me, you be free from Maya and then approach me. He's saying, you be in Maya, but somehow you come in my presence. I will run behind you and shoot down your mic form of illusion in this world and liberate you from all bondage. So when Ramchandra's lotus feet are running behind the golden deer, it gives us a lot of hope that even if we are in Maya, if we somehow or the other come in contact in front of the Supreme Lord, Sri Ram, then he will deliver us. So with that introduction, uh, let us begin today's discussion. We have uh, something very uh, beautiful to discuss today on, on the day of Ram Navami. <clears throat> um, in the start of the Valmiki Ramayan, um, in the, in the Balkan, we can see in the first chapter itself, right in the first chapter of, of Balkan, verse two onwards, two, three, and four, very specifically, uh, different qualities of Sri Ramachandra are, are counted. Konu asmin sampratam loke gunavan kascha viryavan dharmadnyascha kritadnyascha satyavakyodradabrata. Very, very beautiful qualities. Just like we see in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Srila Rupa Goswami counts so many different qualities of Krishna. Of course, there are unlimited qualities. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami in his Govinda Lilamrita has mentioned that the, the ability of any individual to count the number of qualities of Krishna is so insignificant in compared to the qualities. Our ability to count the qualities of the Supreme Lord is so insignificant compared to the vast uh, humongous, insurmountable ocean of his qualities. Like, so the example given is it's like a little bird with a little beak trying to peck on a very hard shell of a coconut um, with, with the ambition that the small bird with the small beak can peck and break the coconut. Now that's an impossibility. It's not possible. So Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami says, just like it's impossible for a bird little bird with a little beak to peck on and break the hard shell of a coconut. It is impossible for any living being to count the number of qualities of the Supreme Lord. Another example given by Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is like, he says, counting the number of qualities of the Supreme Lord is like taking one's head and hitting it against Mount Meru with an ambition that we can crack the mountain just by hitting with the head. Now that's an impossibility. He has given a few impossibilities. Another impossibility is uh, the desire to hold the sun in one's hand. Now, trying to hold the sun in one's hand or trying to peck on um, a, a hard coconut shell with a small beak of a bird or trying to crack open a mountain like Sumeru uh, with one's, the ability of one's head banging, it's impossible to either break open a coconut with the beak or crash a mountain to pieces by the banging of one's head or have the ability, however big the palm is, he can hold the sun there. So Kaviraj Goswami says, <clears throat> similarly, it's impossible to count the number of qualities the Supreme Lord has. Our ability, our uh, vessel to hold on to Krishna's qualities or Sri Ram's qualities uh, is very, very insignificant compared to the the quantitative and qualitative analysis of his qualities. Also, it has been mentioned in some other references also that it may be possible at a later day for the scientists or the, the, uh, the vibhudaha, the intelligent men, to count the number of atoms in the universe. Now, that's another impossibility. Or count the number of raindrops from the sky. Now, that's another impossibility. Or count the number of stars in the sky. That's another impossibility. Uh, maybe the person will be able to do all of this, but still such a person will not be able to count the number of qualities of the Supreme Lord. So it's very interesting. Right in the start of the Ramayana, um, the conversation between Valmiki Muni and Narada Muni comes into the scene where the question has been asked uh, to Narada Muni that is there anyone who um, on this earth, Sampratam Loki at this moment, 
who is filled with all these qualities gunavan viryavan dharmajnya kritajnya satya vakya drida vrata this is just the starting six there are 16 to to count is there anyone who is the complete abode of all of these qualities put together and then in the answer to that narada muni not just answers the question of valmiki muni that yes the answer is shri ram who is the abode of all these qualities but he also inspires valmiki muni to pen down all of that and inspires him to uh, write his magnum opus which is the valmiki ramayana which is the adhikrit ramayana there are other uh, colloquial editions of the ramayana like the kamba ramayana the the adhyatma ramayana or the tulsi ramayana etc but this is considered to be the adhikrit ramayana so it is interesting that narad muni is asked this question and narad muni answers and inspires so the ramayana comes as a gift from narad muni's inspiration we find in the pages of the bhagavatam in the first canto right again in the first canto of the of the shrimad bhagavatam vyasadev is perplexed and bewildered and it is narad muni who inspires him to write the shrimad bhagavatam so there narad muni is compared to air hmm? vyasadev is saying oh narada you are like air why because you are present everywhere just like air is present everywhere at all times narad muni is like that whether it is you can see whether it is pralad maharaj liberation of pralad maharaj or the guru of pralad maharaj narada muni dhruva maharaj narada muni manigriv nalakuer narada muni mrigari narada muni vyasadev narada muni valmiki muni narada muni so many in fact narad muni goes on to preach even to the sons of daksha prajapati <laughs> so many instances prachaita so many uh, instances are there in the bhagavatam and other scriptures also so narad muni is the the root uh, fortunate and the most auspicious root of all scriptures whether ramayan whether it is the puranic texts there also narad muni is found in the bhagavatam also narad muni is found so he is like the air he is present at all times everywhere and air also has one more quality that it is very detached the air may touch a flower and then just carry the fragrance far and wide so the air is not just sitting next to the flower it touches the flower and although the air at that point will be detached from the flower it still carries the aroma of the flower this example is given in the 11th canto also especially in the 24 shiksha gurus of uh, the avadut brahmana uh their datatreji their the quality of air has been described and it is detached so narad muni is also like that he is all over the place he may not be in vaikuntha touching the flower lotus flower of mahavishnu's lotus feet but the aroma of hari katha is carried by this air called Nara, uh, narad muni everywhere so he is everywhere at all times detached from everything yet carrying the aroma of the flower like lotus feet and the qualities of the lord also another quality of the air is it is life giving we can't imagine life without air so narad muni is the one who brings in life he brought in life in the in the life of pralad maharaj he brought in life in the life of vyasadev and valmiki muni and so many so he is life giving he is the breath narad muni is the breath and finally one more quality of the air which we can compare to narad muni is air has two characteristics it can enflame a fire so where there is breeze uh, the fire that is already lit can be carried and the intensity of the inflammation can increase at the same time uh, breeze can blow off the fire of a candle so narad muni is like that he is like that breeze he can blow off the fire of suffering and at the same time he can enflame the fire of bhakti so this is the start of the of the ramayan where narad muni is inspiring um valmiki muni to uh, you know bring all these beautiful qualities of shri ramachandra together and it's interesting in another reference we can find the son of parikshit maharaj janamejaya when he is having a conversation with vaishampayana rishi because janame jaya the son of parikshit maharaj somehow had a emotional or a mental wall that he wouldn't talk or listen to anyone and vaishampayana rishi was trying his best to get through that wall and speak to janame jaya so he spoke two words he said vana bhangam and he said go haranam so janame jaya became little intrigued and curious he asked uh, vaishampayana rishi what is this vanabhangam and what is this goharanam 
So <laughs> Vaishampayana Rishi started speaking. For Goharanam, he explains that the Goharanam pastime is the stealing of the cows from the kingdom of Maharaj Virat and how Arjun rescued. So through the Goharanam and the pastime of the rescuing of the cows, the whole of Mahabharata was spoken by Vaishampayana Rishi to Janamejaya, the son of Parikshit. Then he asked, what is this Vanabhangam? In Sanskrit, the word Vana means forest and Bhangam means to destroy. So this referred to Hanuman destroying the whole Ashok Vatika of um, Ravana. So from the word Vana Bhangam, Vaishampayana Rishi spoke the whole Ramayana. And from the word Goharanam, he spoke the whole Mahabharata. And after speaking the whole Ramayana and Mahabharata, uh, Janame Jaya was very satisfied. And Vaishampayana Rishi said, so what are the four things that you learned? So Janame Jaya says that generally people would say the four things that I learned are Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Those are the four things. Dharma means spiritual practice and Artha means economic development or profit. And uh, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Kama means fulfillment of desires. And Moksha ultimately means spiritual emancipation or liberation. So generally people would say these are the four things. But Janame Jaya said, I will not say these are the four things that I learned from the Ramayana or the Mahabharat. In fact, he said, by hearing the Ramayana and the Mahabharat, my desire for Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha was eradicated. I don't desire to perform spiritual activities to get some economic benefit out of it, uh, only to enjoy my senses and later be liberated. That's not what my answer would be. Janame Jaya, the celebrated son of Parikshit, he said, generally people would say this is what they learned. But I have to be honest, my desire for Dharmartha Kama Moksha was completely uprooted. So then Vaishampayana Rishi said, oh, if that is true, please tell me then what are the four things that attracted you towards these texts? So Janame Jaya said, the four things which attracted me towards the Mahabharat are the Nama, Rupa, Guna and Leela, the names, forms, qualities and pastimes of Sri Krishna in the Mahabharata. And then Vaishampayana Rishi said, what about the Ramayana? He said the Nama, Rupa, Guna, Leela, the names, forms, qualities and pastimes of Sri Ramachandra, who is the abode of all auspiciousness, is what attracted my heart. And then he says, anybody who gets attracted by the names, forms, qualities and pastimes of the Supreme Lord, namely Sri Krishna or Sri Ramachandra, uh, such a person will, uh, his desire uh, to um, enjoy or dharma, artha, kama, moksha will be completely uprooted. He will have no desire, just like me. Uh, he will absolutely have no desire for any of this. So the first quality of Sri Ramachandra in this verse that from the Balkan that has been described is Gunavan. So, konu asmin sampratam loke gunavan. Is there anyone who has gunavan, guna, gunas, or transcendental qualities? And one means possessor. Is there anyone who possesses uh, this quality of uh, being virtuous? In Sanskrit, it is translated as saushilyata, which means uh, excellent character. So, is there anyone who has uh, this quality? And in response to that, Sri Ramachandra's uh, qualities have been, or uh, Sri Ramachandra's virtuous nature has been described. Now, we will discuss this in two parts. The first part about Gunavan is very interesting on a, in a, on a practical level in this world we can see. Let's, for, for example, let us take uh, a practical example, something which is, uh, you know, we all can relate to. Let us think and imagine there is, a, there is a person from a foreign land who visits, let's say, a third world country. It could be any third world country. Imagine someone who is from a foreign land comes into a third world, third world country. As soon as he reaches the airport, he understands that the temperature is different, the time zone is different, the way of dressing, the way of speaking, the language, uh, the cuisine depending on what kind of fast food is being offered and everything, the, the population, the pollution, everything is different. It's a whole different ball game, different dynamics altogether. So this person, as soon as he, a person from a foreign land comes into a third world country, uh, he kind of becomes, uh, you know, uh, awkward because he's never encountered such a place. So it is the duty of someone who's there in the airport 
to welcome such a person and take good care of him but unfortunately the world that we live in para dukha sukhi the mentality is by exploiting others by giving pain to others how much pleasure or how much profit can i gain this is the consideration so we see taxi drivers especially or any any vehicle owner especially the taxi drivers we see they see someone from a foreign land coming in and immediately unfortunately this is the situation at least through practical experience that we have seen and encountered the mentality to charge more because we know this person can afford and i can cheat him i can lie in fact they even team up the taxi drivers team up and um, there are more more players in the larger game so charging more than needed exploiting by taking them for a for for longer turns and trips than what is needed speaking lies teaming up and and um, and cheating them and sometimes it gets even worse to threatening extortion um stealing on gun point on knife point and it can get even worse to rape and murder now this is the unfortunate state of uh, the affair of the world that we live in now in such a situation if this happens the person who is in a foreign land he becomes helpless because he doesn't have let's say he doesn't have the sim card of that place so he can't communicate he can communicate to his home country he he doesn't or let's say his phone is also dead he doesn't have the number through which he can call he doesn't know how to get out of that situation he doesn't speak the language and he kind of becomes helpless and in such situation of helplessness sometimes we see that uh, the person just tries to get out of that place by saying whatever and sometimes he's stuck now let's imagine if this person wants to really this this person from a foreign land really wants to get out of that situation and he has no way he can't ask anyone he can talk he can communicate amidst that let's say his brother this person from the foreign land his brother from his home country takes a flight all the way and comes there to this person's place without this person communicating just seeing the distress that just feeling that my brother or my sister may be in some or my spouse or my child may be in some precarious situation takes a flight comes all the way finds this person holds this person's hand puts him on the flight back and takes him back to his home country how hard this person will uh, hug his brother or his sister out of gratitude that i really needed help how did you come you came all the way for me and i did not even reach out to you because my phone was dead and i didn't have your number and there, there was no one here that i could have communicated to you see sometimes in the kumbh mela so many lakhs and lakhs of people come so sometimes they have a booth you know they have a uh, you know like a uh, a small place where lost and found objects and people are called for so let's say if there's someone missing a child missing uh, they have uh, you know bhole bhatke hue shibir so they have like a place where those who are <laughs> missing they make announcements is there someone by this dress or this age the parents are looking for such a child if you find such a child please bring them back because it's impossible to search for a 5 year old 7 year old 10 year old or even a 20 year old i mean it's lakhs and lakhs of people in the kumbh mela right so at that time they just stand there and just depend on destiny that this person may or someone may see this person or this person himself may hear the announcement and find his way back to the shivir but however imagine during amidst that kumbh mela this person who's searching he feels no he may not be able to find me let me go around the whole kumbh mela amidst lakhs and lakhs of people millions and millions of people and search in person how much love would that be that is the love the supreme lord shri ram has when he comes into this world on this very day on ram navami seeing that we are in a foreign land speaking a foreign language they are all speaking a foreign language in this world what is that dukkhalayam ashashvatam pain misery anxiety frustration irritation temporary spirit adi devi adi bhautik adhyatmik janma mrityu jara vyadi this is the climate this is the weather and the temperature this is the cuisine and the tradition and the culture of the material world and the living being who eternally belongs to shri ram is here in this material world 
is in a foreign land and is being exploited by the taxi drivers of material nature. Not literally taxi drivers, but just I'm trying to relate to the previous example. Being tossed by the suffering of the mind, tossed by the suffering of the body, ripped open by the suffering of relationships and financial problem and health crisis. Look what's happening to the whole world now. A spirit soul who is eternal has to be embarrassed in temporary bodies of suffering and disease and distress and death. When the Supreme Lord out of compassion understands that this person who is lost in a foreign land cannot even reach out to me. He can't listen to my words of the Bhagavad Gita and come to the shivir of the lost and found like in the Kumbha Mela. He cannot take the flight back from the foreign land to the homeland. Let me myself in my original form go into that land, find this person amidst millions and millions of jivas. Let me find every jiva out of love, hold their hand, wipe their tears and take them back to the spiritual world. This is avatar tattva. This is the potency of the Supreme Lord's compassion. So when he says janma karma chame divyam, how is his karma divya? How are his activities and his appearance divya or transcendental? It is because they are all backed up with the fundamental guna of compassion. Fundamental guna of compassion. You see, in this world, suffering is uh, the fundamental uh, background music, you can say. Uh, I remember when the World Cup season was on many, many years ago, cricket. Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj at that time on one Sunday feast, he said that in the World Cup, there are 12 teams. And the rule is only one team can win, which means 11 teams have to lose so that one team wins, which means for one person to smile as a ratio, there are 11 people crying. For one person to win, there are 11 people to lose. For one person to be happy, there are 11 people sad. That is the ratio. And no incarnation comes like Sri Ram. I'll tell you why. Someone could say, well, by this definition, every incarnation, whether it's Krishna, whether it's Narasimha, whether it is Varaha, they all come. Nishprapanchat prapanche avatarati. They are all coming from that world into this world, finding us. But none of them go through personal pangs of separation and agony and distress in their own Leela. Ramachandra's Leela is Karunne Leela. Sri Ramachandra is signifying by parting with his own wife when she is being, or the eternal consort, Mother Sita, when she's being kidnapped by Ravana to show that how much pain I feel in my heart when I'm separated from Mother Sita is how much pain I feel when I'm separated from you, O living being. That is how much pain I feel. I am ready to walk barefoot in the forest, leave my Ayodhya and walk and sleep on the grass and sleep in, in, in thatched hut in a forest. And when I lose you, O living being, I am ready to search by befriending the monkeys. I am ready to fight the demons. I am ready to make a bridge of stones over the ocean of birth and death to rescue you from the Ashok Vatika of this material world while you're kept there by the ten-headed Ravana called Maya. Sri Ramachandra is personally going through that separation and then union with Mother Sita to show all of us. Although Mother Sita is Ladini Shakti and we are only Tatastha Shakti, Sri Ramachandra is personally showing us this is Gunavan. Guna means uh, he has the quality of compassion, of relatability with each one of us. In his avatar also, in his descent only, there is protection of all good qualities. Sri Ramachandra, instead of supremely enjoying his abode there in Nitya Ayodhya or his abode here in Ayodhya. He's leaving that abode, leaving this abode only so that he's leaving his home twice, that home and this home, only so that we can reach our home at least once. <laughs> Very hope-giving quality. Gunavan, someone who's ready to take struggle on his own account, only so that uh, others can, um, all of us can have of going back home, back to God. In this world, we see uh, people can sacrifice little for others, but not many. Even animals, we can see sometimes. When the master of a dog accidentally slips into water, the dog is ready to jump into water and pull the master out. That is how much affection the dog has. I was reading an article about a penguin which was uh, saved 
by one, one person. And the penguin swims thousands of miles across the ocean once every year to come and see the rescuer who saved the penguin. So if dog has the, the ability to sacrifice, jump into water for its master, and the penguin has its quality of swimming across the ocean for the rescuer, rescuer, where are they getting those qualities from? It is coming from the Supreme Lord who unlimitedly for all times to come qualitatively and quantitatively is ready to jump into the water of suffering, ready to swim across the ocean of birth and death only to give us the chance to swim back into the eternal realm of the Lord. This is how much the Supreme Lord loves us. In this world, we take the previous example even further. We, say, we see sometimes people, especially children, are unfortunately kidnapped or you know, sometimes even um, drugged and made to beg on the streets. And they don't even, poor children, they don't even remember who their parents are or where they come from. And they're just loitering on the street with uh, pain in the body, no slippers in the middle of summer afternoon and no clothes in winter. And they're drenched in rain, no clothing and suffering of the mind. They are also hungry and thirsty, uh, loitering and completely drugged, which means they have no awareness of who their parents are. At that time, imagine if there is someone who goes onto the street, that person, that child doesn't even know how much help it needs. But if there is someone who's very large hearted, he takes that person, cleans that person, reminds that person and nurses him back to health and tells him where his parents are and takes him there. How much grateful the child will feel. He, can't, he can never reciprocate and, and, and pay his debt back to the person. So this is how much guna, this is how much love the Supreme Lord has for all of us, for lifetimes of pain that we have been enduring in this world. The Supreme Lord comes once in the day of Brahma as Sri Ram and personally goes through uh, so many twists and turns in his own personal pastime so that we can relate to his pastime. And our amnesia, forgetfulness of the eternal world is uh, revived. Forgetfulness is overcome and our eternal memory is revived. He holds our hand and takes us back to the spiritual world. This is uh, the nature of Sri Ramachandra's beautiful, wonderful pastime. So this is one aspect of Sri Ramachandra's guna, which means he has so much uh, compassion for all of us that he's ready to come on this very day to help all of us. Another aspect of Sri Ramachandra's guna or quality is his relatability with all of us. Now, when we talk about saushilyata, it means someone who has excellent character. Mother uh, Queen Kunti says in the Bhagavatam, there are four things which make one proud. Janma, Aishwarya, Shruta and Shri. It is noble birth and lot of wisdom and, and you know, uh, unlimited wealth and bodily beauty. These are the four things which make one proud. Now, if you actually see, even if one of these things are there, the person becomes proud. Whether there is high birth, Brahmanical birth, whether there is richness, whether there is beauty, whether there is wisdom, any one of these things are there, the person becomes proud. What to speak of all four of them there, along with fame and recognition, Mani Grieve Nalakuver are a classic downslope example of having all four. They had high birth, sons of Kuber, they had a lot of wealth, they had wisdom, they had beauty, a lot of fame, and they went downhill with Aparat. But look at Sri Ram. He has all four. He has high birth, Surya Vanshi, excellent wisdom. Who can even come close to Sri Ram, the Supreme Lord's wisdom? Um, Ram means uh, Ramaniya. He is very, very attractive, very pleasure, pleasure giving and pleasurable, very beautiful and handsome, and at the same time, very wealthy, being the, the king of Ayodhya. But look at his humility. Respect for everyone, accessibility to one and all. Generally, when someone has even one of these things, uh, they become little detached from society and little inaccessible for one and all to approach. But Sri Ramachandra has all five of them and many more attributes, but so accessible. Uh, whether it is uh, the tribe Guha, whether it is Kevat, the boatman who wanted to take the dust from the Lord's lotus feet when he was crossing across the Ganga, 
came out very transcendently, devotionally treat Sri Ram by saying that um, I heard the, the pastime of the dust from your lotus feet, touching a stone and turning into a halya, a woman. Um, now, you know, I'm concerned my boat may turn into a female. So let me take all the dust from your lotus feet. And he did that repeatedly. And he took the charanamrit and sprinkled on everyone, kept it for himself, kept it for his family. And Sri Ram just smiled as if Sri Ram doesn't know the inner intention. He was reciprocating to Kevat's devotion. So whether it is the tribe Guha or whether it is Kevat, very easily approaching the lotus feet. Shastra says, Katham Vishnu Padam Proktam At Durlabham Ati Durlabham. How is it to approach the lotus feet of the Lord? Oh, very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. When Krishna danced with those same lotus feet on the head of Kaliya, the Nagapatnis are saying, how did our husband get the chance of being touched by the dust from your lotus feet? Not possible. How is it possible? It is only your mercy, my Lord. So Krishna, when he showers the dust from the lotus feet on the head of the serpent, then the prayers are saying even Sri Lakshmi Devi doesn't get it. Even Brahmaji doesn't get it. And here that same Supreme Lord is letting the dust from his lotus feet touch a stone, touch a tribe, touch a boatman. This is the accessibility of Sri Ram. Being the son of Dasharat Maharaj, being the king of Ayodhya, uh, letting tribe like Guha, uh, the Nishad tribe head, uh, Kevat. What to speak of monkeys? What to speak of Sugriva? It's very, very interesting. Sugriva had promised the Supreme Lord. Uh, he promised the Supreme Lord that I will, I will uh, help you, my Lord. I will uh, get your uh, wife back. And it's interesting. Sri Ramachandra shot Wali dead, got Sugriva's wife back. And then it was the four months of Chaturmas. Sugriva forgot about the promise that he gave Sri Ram. Ramachandra is sitting, remembering Mother Sita. The four months of rainy season are have passed. But the rock party in Sugriva's palace is still going on. He is still in the mood of enjoying. And... When on being reminded that you promise that you will help in the search party, searching Mother Sita. So Sugriva was thinking, oh, really, four months have been passed. He even forgot the promise that he gave Sri Ram. So this is Sri Ram. He is accommodating all kinds of people, whether it is the tribe, whether it is the portman, whether it is a monkey like Sugriva. Uh, what to speak of a Rakshasa like Vibhishan? What to speak of a Rakshasa like Vibhishan? Being accessible to everyone without having the air that I am the Supreme Lord or I am the king or I am so special. Sri Ramchandra is like an elephant and everyone is like a kid. But what is the elephant doing here? The elephant is coming on its knees and laying on the floor and letting the kid play with its big long ear. The kid can never climb on top of the elephant. But when the, the elephant sees that the kid is very sincere and innocent, the elephant sits on its legs and let the kid play with its ear. That is the Supreme Lord Sri Ram. Sri Ramachandra as Bhagavan sits down out of compassion, being Gunavan, lets, him, lets himself being accessible to everyone and everyone's playing with his ear, the ear of his wonderful relatability. And not just that, Sri Ram goes even one step higher. That is increased intimacy. He depends on his devotees for help. Instead of helping his devotees, he is asking his devotees for helping him. Hmm. Vishnu is never asking his devotees for helping him. But Sri Ramachandra goes to that extent and asking help from Sugriva, asking help from everyone around. You please help me in finding Mother Sita. Accessibility, increased intimacy and dependence. It is almost like a spiritual master who calls up the disciple and says, I'm passing through your city tomorrow. Uh, is it okay if I can come over to your place uh, for 30 minutes for breakfast, prasadam? I promise I will not take more than that. The disciple hair will stand on end. He will think, Guru Maharaj, my whole life is for you. Hmm? And you have so many homes to go. You don't ask me for permission. You instruct me. You can go to any home, but you are calling me and asking me if I can feed you. Yes, it is, uh, it is my privilege. Please come. So it is like that. Sri Ram is like the spiritual master, but asking his disciples, his devotees for help. It is like a math teacher who knows addition and arithmetic, 
but is asking the student, I am stuck with this problem. Uh, two plus two is four, I know, but four plus four, I don't know what the answer is. And the kid counts five, six, seven, eight. Four plus four is eight, teacher. And the math teacher says, oh, thank you for helping me. The math teacher can herself solve the problem, but by depending on the student, she makes the student feel wanted. And the, the student's love in the heart for the teacher increases in intimacy. It's not just one way, but she feels, the student feels that I'm able to contribute something for my teacher. So this is the relatability of Sri Ramachandra. This is what in the fifth canto has been described by Hanuman. In the, from the Kim Purusha Varsha, Hanuman is offering prayers in the fifth canto of Bhagavatam. And he says, Na janmano nam mahatana sobhagam na vak na buddhi akriti to shaheto taya visrishthan apino vano kasam chakara sakhe patalakshmana grajaha. Hanumanji is saying, Na janmano nam. I don't have aristocratic birth. Mahatan na sobhagam. I don't have any fortune from my past life. Na vak. I don't even have ability to speak. Na buddhi. Hmm? Hanuman is saying, I have no buddhi. Buddhi matam varishtam. Atulita baladhamam. Hema shaila badeham. Danujavana krishanum. Nyani nam agraganyam. Sakala guna nidanam. Vanarana madhisham. Raghupati priya bhaktam. Vata jatam namami. That Hanumanji, who is the abode of all strength, the abode of all knowledge, the abode of all ability and intelligence, he's saying, no, vak, I don't have the ability to speak. No, buddhi, I don't have comprehending ability. And no, akriti tosha heto. My Lord, I don't even have bodily beauty to give pleasure to your eyes. And to add more trouble to my life, I don't have a home. I live in the forest and I eat fruits from this forest, which means you and us are completely two dimensions of life altogether. Na janma. You have Surya Vansha Janma. Your Dasharat Nandan. Look at us. Na janma. Mahata na saubhagam. Uh, for you, there was a Putra Kameshti Yadnya. The demigods came and prayed to you for descent. And we are just born like that. No Mahata na saubhagam. We don't have saubhagya. Uh, na vak. Sri Ram, your words. You speak instructions like a thunderbolt, but you quote them softer than a lotus. But we don't even know how to speak. Buddhi, you are buddhir buddhimatam asmi. Tejas tejas vinamaham. You are the source of all intelligence. And what you're speaking, that also we can't understand. And akriti tosha heto. Look at your bodily beauty and look at our features. And look at the home that you come from and look at the home that we live in. Look at the clothes that you wear and look at the clothes that we wear. Look at the food that you're accustomed to and look at the food that we are accustomed to. There is absolutely no match between you and us, my Lord. But it is your gunavan nature. But it is your greatness that you have accepted us. You have extended your hand of friendship. Not that you have ex accepted us as servants. We are always your servants. But you promoted us to equal friendship, to the position of being friends. So this is Gunavan. Gunavan means no discrimination. Patra patra vicharanam na kurute, na swamparam vikshate, deya devi marshako nahinava kala pratiksha prabho. Prabhodananda Saraswati has said this with respect to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also. Absolutely no discrimination. And Sri Ramachandra is like that. Very kind, uh, very, very compassionate at all times to everyone, irrespective of whatever is the past, irrespective of all qualifications or material disqualifications. Only if we go to Sri Ram and say, my Lord, apart from you, I have nobody. Please, please glance on me. Sri Ram is very, very kind. And therefore, those who meditate on Sri Ram, they also get this quality of being Gunavan. They also have this quality of Quality in Gunavan, we spoke about two aspects. One, extending for others, like Sri Ramchandra extends out. We gave the example of someone coming into a foreign land. That's the first. Gunavan means ready to sacrifice for others. And the second, uh, the quality of relatability and being with everyone without having any air about our position and uh, considering their position. Anyone who meditates on the Supreme Lord, he also inherits these qualities. Like we see Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada being Gunavan, 
he had got these qualities he had the quality of extending out to see this um, extending out seeing the suffering of others and giving the hand out for help and at the same time uh, accessing being accessible to everyone irrespective of their past shila prabhupad if you see had everything perfect coming from radha damodar temple in vrindavan being a sanyasi being bhakti vedanta scholar being from the most excellent vaishnav cultured background relating to people of all backgrounds on one hand relating to people uh, great grandson of henry ford ambarish prabhu and on the other hand relating to people who didn't even know who their father was straight from the street prabhupad was accepting both where is prabhupad getting that quality from is getting it from shri ram from the supreme lord shri la prabhupad as a child we can see he vomited and spit out the chicken soup right from his childhood he didn't like it and he who had so much distaste and awareness to meet he had to share his food in the same fridge where meat was kept at butler pennsylvania in the house of gopal and sally agarwal so you can see how much prabhupad extended this is the quality of the supreme lord this is uh, guna excellent super excellent uh, quality of shri ramachandra and the more we take pleasure in these qualities we will lose complete taste for any other quality that we find in this world of any other person people in these days are so fascinated about uh, sports stars and cricket stars and hollywood bollywood stars uh, but anyone who who really understands what we are discussing they will lose all taste for any celebrity status whatsoever they will only have taste in discussing the past times the qualities of shri ram who has so much love for us we can see in the rama and just to take this discussion ahead about uh, about gunavan we can see in the rama and that the, the of course the killing the fight with ravan is very entertaining for everyone no doubt but the point i'm trying to stitch here is uh, vibhishan coming to shri ram chandra for shelter and at that time there is a difference of opinion we see sugriva jambavan everyone speaking up that uh, vibhishan has a few disqualifications first of all he is born in a demoniac family so the demoniac blood is flowing in him second he is ravana's brother so in the same tree in the same neem tree you cannot have neem fruit and you cannot have a mango fruit there on one hand you have uh, surpanakha we have uh, um, kumbhakarna and then ravana and then you can't have a mango out of nowhere so first of all he is a demoniac it's a demoniac lineage and secondly uh, demoniac family secondly he is the brother of our enemy so he is completely disqualified we should not accept him they also mentioned an interesting point that if he had to take shelter he could have taken shelter any time long time ago why did he wait so long and why is he taking shelter taking shelter right now what is it that changed his mind overnight maybe he is a spy maybe he is being sly some even commented that if vibhishan can leave his brother then he can easily leave you also shri ram but amidst all that when shri ramachandra asked hanuman hanuman who was the who was a expert in uh, samudrika uh, shastra to understand the features the face reading you could say mudra mudrika samudrika shastra so lakshanam samudrika lakshana shastra so by understanding the features on the face hanuman he could he could say he could see that the eyes and the face are the index of the mind and the heart so seeing the body language seeing the face seeing that vibhishan was full of innocence hanuman said my lord i think we should accept him um, he he may well he may be the brother of ravan he may be from a demoniac family and and you know according to everyone maybe he is not qualified but i think we should accept him because he has come and shri ramachandra said yes uh, you, you you may have all the disqualifications but the fact that you have come to me i will accept and what to speak of you even if your brother ravana comes and bows just one of his 10 heads i will accept him also this is shri ram gunava forgetting all the bad uh, of the past just accepting on the uh, on the nature that we want to be accepted by the supreme lord so how much can we do for our upliftment only so much only little sadhana but rest it is shri ram who does being gunavan he forgets our past and relates with us and accepts us completely we see on the path of bhakti whether it is dham the different past time places whether it is 
shastras, whether it is sadhu, guru, vigrahas, the deities, the holy name, all of this are actually the extensions of the hand of Sri Ramachandra. Sri Ramachandra from the spiritual world is extending his hand through all of these different uh, aspects of uh, bhakti only to get us back. So, uh, so this is this is the the nature of of Sri Ram Gunava, completely uh, completely uh, virtuous, completely spotless in character. Only seeing the good, he has the eye of a sun. You see, Surya Vanshi means what? The sun has this quality, whether it is pure water or whether it is a pool of uh, muddy water. The sun with equal vision, it evaporates. The sun has a few qualities we can see, which uh, naturally Sri Ramachandra is the origin of all these qualities. First and foremost, the sun is equal. It gives equal light to all directions. Sri Ramachandra is like that. Second, whether it is pure water, Ganga water or muddy water, the sun evaporates both equally without having any bias or taking having any partiality. So Sri Ramachandra accepts all people from all background and all qualities, even if they have a bad past. The desire that I want to be in front of the sun, you see, if the muddy pool is in front of the sun, the sun accepts it, evaporates. So Sri Ramachandra accepts us. The third thing is now the place does the muddy pool doesn't have any stink. It becomes clean. So similarly, once we are accepted by the Supreme Lord, our consciousness becomes completely transcendental. And fourth, the dirt of the muddy pool doesn't stick on the face of the sun. So similarly, when Sri Ramachandra accepts us, our sins don't get deposited in him. He still remains Gunavan. In this world, we can see if dal is spilled on the floor, you take a clean cloth and you clean. The floor becomes clean, but the cloth becomes dirty. But Sri Ramachandra's name, form, qualities and pastimes are not like that. They are like the sun because he's Surya Vanshi. They evaporate the dirt in us, but that dirt doesn't go and putrefy or pollute the Supreme Lord. The Lord remains as transcendently pure as ever. So this is the nature of Sri Ram. And what is our nature? <laughs> Look how disgusting our nature is. When Ram and Lakshman came, we see that uh, Sugriva, when he was first, when he first glanced at uh, Ram and Lakshman, he had a doubt. Who are they? Are they enemies? Are they, although they are well-wishers, Sri Ram and Lakshman are the well-wishers for the whole world. Supreme Lord coming there to give benefit to Sugriva. But Sugriva represents our mentality. He's still doubting. Instead of seeing that this is my eternal well-wisher, the Lord of my life, this is my Paramatma. Sugriva is still thinking, oh, maybe they're sent by Wali. Uh, maybe my enemies still having this doubt, nature of criticizing and doubting. Sometimes people have this doubt. Uh, Sri Ramachandra, although we are talking so many good qualities about Sri Ram, why did he kill Wali from behind the tree? Why did he do this? Why did he do that? Uh, these people are not uh, reading Shastras properly. And that is why. There is a proper reason for everything. In fact, our Acharyas mention uh, that a very interesting example has been given. They mentioned that Dasharat Maharaj created a, a, a lake or a pond and the name of the pond or the lake is Sri Ram. And it is filled with the most sweet nectar, which is Sri Ram's qualities and bhakti rasa. Anyone who tastes it, they taste bhakti rasa. And unlike the ponds or lakes of this world, which just stays in one place, this pond or lake created by Dasharat Maharaj, dug by Dasharat Maharaj, called as Sri Ram, it is moving from place to place. It is a flowing lake. It is a flowing pond. It is flowing from forest to forest. So Sri Ramachandra goes into the forest to search for all of us who are in the Bhavavana. So Dasharat Maharaj creates a lake called Sri Ram, filled with the sweet nectar of Sri Ram's qualities. Anyone who tastes the nectar from that pond is tasting Bhakti Rasa. And the characteristic of this pond is it is moving from one place to another. Now, especially when this lake came to Kishkinda, <laughs> when it came to Kishkinda, what happened? Everyone floated in that lake. All the monkeys, Hanuman and all the monkeys, they all floated in bliss. But there was one Vanar called Wali. What did he do? He tied a rock to his uh, neck or let's say to his waist. What was that rock? The rock of averseness to the Supreme Lord, the rock of wickedness. He tied that Vanar called Wali, tied the rock of averseness, averseness or negativity, enmity to the Supreme Lord, lack of faith in the Supreme Lord. 
and when you tie a rock and you jump into a pond what happens you will drown so everyone floated in this lake called shri ram when this lake came to kishkinda but wali uh, he tied a rock of averseness averseness <clears throat> or distaste towards the supreme lord lack of faith and he drowned and died so whose fault is it is it the fault of the supreme lord or is it the fault of the monkey who tied the rope and the rock it is wali's fault it is described that the supreme lord can teach us through two ways one is shastra and one is shastra shastra means scripture so when he teaches through shastra scripture uh, the wise and the noble they learn through that and when we don't learn through shastra then the supreme lord has to pick up the shastra and through both ways only good and enlightenment comes up you see wali also uh, he got uh, shastra good words uh, through tara very nice words but they went in deaf ears so then when shastra failed supreme lord sri ram had to pull up the shastra <laughs> and that shastra went through wali and uh, then later and on the departure bed Uh, Sri Ramachandra even offered Wali this option that if you want, I can pull out that arrow. Wali says, "No, my lord, you have enlightened me <laughs> through this shastra prahar lila. You have actually enlightened me. All my avidya is out of the window. Hmm. This is what Sri Ram does. You see, when he killed Tataka, when he killed Subahu, when he hit Marij far and wide, these are all qualities of his guna van." and also a little bit of viryavan is coming there because you see tataka uh, tataka represents avidya she represents avidya and uh, you can see putana also has that same mood of being avidya therefore when putana came in krishna leela krishna closed his eyes that i don't want to see towards darkness or avidya and in ramchandra's leela this first uh, demon or demoness tataka represents avidya or ignorance what ignorance is that the ignorance about who i am the ignorance about who god is the ignorance about why i am here the ignorance about what my relation with the lord is when one is ignorant about all of these things that is called tataka so what sri ram does being gunavan and viryavan is he takes his arrow shastra and he pierces through the tataka of avidya and when that is there uh, divya gyan hriday prakashit preme bhakti jaha hoite avidya vinash jate this arrow ram ban it destroys the tataka in our heart and what does subahu represent well subahu represents all the past reactions the reactions from past life hmm. one time one man came and he told shila prabhupad that uh, oh, i have read all this bhagavad gita it was back in india prabhupad said so what is there in the bhagavad gita and typically <laughs> this is seen in in the western world people don't want to hear um and and in india they feel they know it so it's it's kind of a difficult challenge in preaching so one indian gentleman he came to prabhupada and he said i have read the bhagavad gita prabhupada said what does the bhagavad gita say prabhupada so the man said well krishna says uh, you know you follow dharma and you give up sin <laughs> prabhupada said wrong krishna says exact opposite he says give up dharma huh and continue sinning i will take away your sin don't worry <laughs> so this man said uh, krishna is saying give up sin and follow dharma uh, prabhupad said no krishna is saying even if you have sin no problem give up dharma i will take away your sin aham tam sarva papibhyo moksha mokshishyami so this is uh, subahu subahu represents reactions from past life and shri ramachandra's bala uh, astra very strong and name by the name bala he shot it and subahu dropped dead so that means when we take shelter of shri ramachandra the first thing that happens is tataka or avidya is destroyed and then also avidya about bodily conception and the basic understanding of the bhagavad gita and then the reactions coming from past they are also destroyed the supreme lord takes away all those reactions whatever is coming from past life uh, he completely finishes it off and then marich Marich is an interesting phenomenon. Marich, Sri Ramachandra did not kill him, but shot an arrow, and he was he he flung eight hundred miles across the ocean. Now this was this was one arrow, uh, Ati Bala Shastra, the the strong one, and he hit, and then Marich fell off far and wide. But Sri Ramachandra did not kill him. Why? Because 
marriage represents tendencies on the path of spiritual life if the tendencies are bad then they are shot away but if the tendencies are good there is a chance to come back you see someone who deviates on the path of bhakti is not destroyed he comes back after some time you know he returns even after 5 years 10 years 20 years he comes back one of the boys also in the in the preaching uh, you know uh, when when he was um, when when he was being preached to by one of the devotees the devotee said you know don't be so krishna conscious um parents sometimes they can take objection thinking that you are going to be a brahmachari etc so this person said no actually my mother is very supportive of me being a devotee why because when she uh, picked up the bhagavad gita and she tried reading it she did not understand the philosophy so then she desired if i have a son and i educate my son in school nicely then he can teach me the bhagavad gita so when i am studying the bhagavad gita and i go home and i i teach my mother she is very happy so she lost 20 years in her life in making me you know in in uh, making me into a adult now but she still interested so what she started off with the bhagavad gita in you know 20 years ago she came back to it through her son so in this way many times we see people who start off they may go away like marriage shot across because of some tendency or distraction but they will come back onto the back onto the service of shri ram so shri ram doesn't kill marriage so in this way we see coming back here to wali also wali is saying my lord don't pull out the arrow of me uh, with this arrow you have enlightened me you have destroyed the avidhya you have taken uh, all the bad reactions from the past and all the distraction and tendencies are also thrown away not just that my lord i am having sakshat darshan at the time of death and i'm chanting your holy name and my eyes are glancing at your lotus face um, this uh, this cannot get better so please don't uh, take the arrow back don't uh, retrieve it and give me life people sometimes criticize without understanding shri ram's position in fact wali's wife herself glorifies shri ram so what is our problem <laughs> she herself glorifies my lord your your qualities are so beautiful hmm? in this way Uh, sugriva he doesn't understand the position of ram and lakshman as as they are coming as as they are coming approaching him we are like that we are like sugriva although shri ram is gunavan our vision is that you know i don't need ram in my life i don't need bhakti in my life uh, my guru maharaj explains this very beautifully he says that gratitude brings in happiness and lack of gratitude brings in distress if there is a sun who says i am a very good person but he is rude to his father and doesn't even speak to his father generally society will say well you know you shouldn't do like that you should you should be grateful to your father or your mother for for whatever they have given you so imagine how much sri ram gives us ram gives us the breath uh, ram gives us sun and moon ram gives us the air ram gives us the earth that we stand on ram gives us the pranic life within he is the super soul so how can we think that i can live a life without god oh i i am a good human being i am i'm helping everybody but i don't need god that's like the ultimate extent of uh, ungratitude towards the or ingratitude towards the supreme father shri ram so sugriva is doubtful and he even doubts that shri ram and lakshman maybe they are coming from wali's camp but when hanuman goes to welcome and there is a very interesting uh, yogamaya leela of uh, introduction between the two Sri Ramachandra is asked for introduction, <laughs> and Sri Ramachandra says, "I am from Ayodhya, and my father's name is Dasharatha, and this is my lineage, etc." You know, very honestly, Sri Ram, as he is Charitravan, Gunavan, he is speaking. Now look at Lakshman. When Lakshman is asked for introduction, Lakshman could also have said, "You know, generally when when <laughs> when someone says I am from IIT, and the other person is also from IIT, he can also say, 'Well, I am also from IIT.'" so which means whatever he said i am also like i also deserve all that introduction and i also deserve all that glorification but Lak- so lakshmana could have said well i am also from ayodhya uh, i am shri ram's brother uh, i am also the son of dasharatha and all the good qualities that ram is talking about well uh, maybe little less but uh, i am i am also having all of that he could have said like that <laughs> but it's interesting lakshmana says um actually it is just my fortune 
it is absolutely my fortune that ram calls me uh, his brother actually my position is that of his servant he is my lord i am his servant and then it's an interesting statement lakshmana says i am his servant because i am completely attracted by his transcendental qualities being gunavan ram is gunavan he is filled with so many beautiful qualities that my heart is just attracted by those qualities and i am his servant and he is my lord i am just fortunate to be there but uh, ram is so kind to pick me up and keep me on the same seat and call me as his brother so this is uh, this is what happens to someone who meditates on those qualities so ramachandra is the complete abode of those qualities and anyone who meditates on those qualities like lakshmana there is natural humility because one will see a contrast of how great ram's qualities are and how insignificant our qualities are and how we are proud of the qualities that we have just like if someone comes on to the shore of a big ocean naturally they become humble looking at the waves and the insurmountable nature of the ocean the tides of the ocean one feels so small but when one is away from the ocean Uh, one feels very big so the, to the extent we are closer to the ocean to that extent we be, we feel very small so to the extent we are closer to the qualities of shri ram being gunavan uh, to that extent we will naturally feel humble so this is what lakshmana feels now let's see hanuman when hanuman is asked for introduction <laughs> who are you asked by ram and lakshman hanuman says well i am foolish my lord <laughs> i am unworthy and i'm supremely unfortunate i am foolish i am unworthy and completely unfortunate so ramchandra says uh, you know what kind of introduction is this <laughs> i gave a very nice introduction about myself and lakshmana introduced himself now when i'm asking you for introduction why are you saying you're foolish why are you saying you're unworthy why are you saying you're unfortunate why what is the reason and for each one of that the commentators have given very good reasons why why does hanuman say that he is foolish hanuman says my lord i am foolish because i am asking you for your introduction when a living entity does not know who the supreme lord is he is foolish in this world the lord who is maintaining him if he doesn't know the introduction the identity of that lord he is foolish so then it's as if ram and lakshman said then why are you why are you saying that you're uh, unworthy hmm? why you're not speaking about yourself like see i spoke that i am from ayodhya i am son of dasharath maharaj and this is how i am here why you're not speaking about yourself to which it's almost like hanuman is speaking in his heart that my dear lord the aim of life is to speak ram katha when you introduce yourself ram katha flows through your mouth but when i am introducing myself it is not ram katha so therefore i am unworthy to speak about myself you speaking about yourself is the eternal reality because it is the nature of every tongue to speak ram katha so you don't have to speak ram katha you are just introducing yourself and that is reality but when i introduce myself there is no ram katha flowing so therefore i am very unworthy my lord I, there is no point in me speaking then it's as if sri ramchandra is asking hanuman then why do you say you are unfortunate hanuman says i am unfortunate my lord because the lord of my life is coming and asking me who who are you so the day where the master doesn't recognize the servant what is the use where is the fortune in the life of such a servant so we see i'm saying this as an example that hanuman ji and lakshmana both as devotees are so captivated by the gunavan quality of sri ram that naturally they both are humble hanuman is humble lakshmana is humble uh, accepting the position of shri ramachandra's quality hmm? how much compassion he has how much merciful he is hmm? uh, how uh, magnanimous shri ramachandra is in accessibility this is the nature of shri ramachandra's heart and anyone who meditates on this quality of shri ram naturally they find increased devotion and humility in their heart hmm? Sri Ramachandra. Another quality of Sri Ram, and with this I will stop today, is he is Dharmatnya and Kritanya both. Now the interesting thing about Dharmatnya, Dharma means duty, and Nya means to know. So he is Dharmatnya. He he knows his duty. Well, we all have our duty. In uh, <laughs> we have our duty in serving the Lord. 
what is the duty of the lord he doesn't have any dharma right he is completely transcendental abhidnya swarat he is completely independent so what is the dharma that he has we have deha dharma varna dharma ashrama dharma and then for the soul we have sanatan dharma but what is the dharma for shri ram dharmajnya he knows everything he knows all the shastra dharmantu sakshat bhagavat pranitam here at the same time what is the dharma that he comes to perform in this world hmm. one time mother sita asked shri ram they were sitting close to each other in the forest and mother sita asked shri ram what would be the greatest pain in your heart now if this was krishna leela radha and krishna are sitting krishna will say the greatest pain in my heart is separation from you <laughs> but shri ramachandra is duty over love krishna is love over duty so krishna would have said the greatest pain in my heart is separation from you but shri ramachandra did not say that when mother sita asked what is the greatest pain in your heart would be the greatest pain shri ramachandra said the greatest pain in my heart is to see someone not suffer seeing the suffering of others which means we are expected to go through suffering seeing the suffering of others but when we don't suffer seeing the suffering of others that gives pain to the heart of the supreme lord like we can see in chitrakoot dandakaranya we can see when the sages came uh, to shri ramachandra uh, and then they said uh, that the demons are throwing abominable stuffs into our fire sacrifice they are polluting the whole sacrifice throwing substances in there and destroying the whole thing they are even killing brahmanas Uh, we are doing yajna for the whole world and we the brahmanas are saying sages are saying we are doing it for your pleasure my lord and these people are uh, polluting the whole sacrificial arena so when shri ramchandra is listening the sages added that we ourselves can use mantras and kill all of them it's not that we need help <laughs> we can do that but the reason we are coming to you my lord is because we have come in this forest not to be kshatriyas we have come in this forest to practice tolerance we can kill them we have no problem we can kill them we can chant mantras and asur maran mantra we can chant and they will drop dead but we have not come into the forest for himsa we have come here for practicing sahishnuta tolerance ahimsa and any sort of cursing others anger towards others violence towards others uh, we want to stay away from that so the sages said my lord if you think uh, if you think um, you you we are worthy of your protection please protect us we beg you for protection we can protect ourselves but we want to practice dependence on you so at that time our dharmajnya viryavan gunavan shri ram he says please don't beg from me please please don't request me you order me i will never be able to do favor on you you are doing favor on me by engaging me in this service so let me kill seeing you suffer that is giving me suffering this is the greatest pain for me so look at shri ram this is his dharma dharma for shri ram is to go through suffering seeing our suffering <laughs> he is not just the knower of dharma he practices this karuna dharma so at that time mother sita said Uh, my dear lord shri ram i have a point to make here you have not come into the forest to be a kshatriya you have come into the forest to be a vanachari to move in the forest said mother sita you have not come here to be a kshatriya and then mother sita added kshatriya has generally they have three faults one they speak lies or they may speak lies second there may be some illicit behavior in one's character and third they may engage in unnecessary violence mother sita said as far as the first two are concerned i am i have no doubt about you you never speak lies and forget about illicit activities your character is perfect but my lord i am concerned maybe this could be unnecessary violence here we have come in the forest to live like vanachari you have given up your position as a kshatriya uh, so my lord these are the three flaws of a kshatriya first two are i am completely fine but with the th- uh, because i have no concern about them you have not not a blot uh, you don't have any blemish on your character as far as all three are concerned but my concern is you should not engage in unnecessary violence shri ramchandra is listening to the whole thing this also teaches us when there are two parties in a marriage the person should let the other person speak and listen also mother sita also gives an example a story to support that 
she says uh, indra many times he comes and he tricks the sages by sending women and sometimes what he does is he doesn't send women like for example once he came as a kshatriya himself indra came as a kshatriya and he gave a weapon to a sadhu he said you just hold i will be back and indra indra went and one day passed two days passed three days passed the sadhu standing with the with the sword and the weapon thinking that this person will come and take it back and then it became weeks he was his attachment to this weapon increased because he was thinking i have to be careful of this what if that person comes and asks me back again i am responsible i have a duty but when indra did not come because he had come to trick as a kshatriya he gave his weapon to the sadhu and he left now the sadhu he thought anyway i have it why not i start using it and he started off with basic work with that weapon and then later on he became a serial killer he became a murderer he became very violent so mother sita gives this example to say that uh, even sages can go off track by using weapons in the forest so this is my concern oh shri ram this is my concern that uh, your character should not be polluted at that time shri ram hears to mother sita completely and he congratulates her and says that you're such a well wisher you're all only thinking about my good but oh sita please understand now look at the gunavan and the dharmatnya quality of shri ram mixing with the uh, viryavan <laughs> viryavan because he's ready to fight gunavan because he's ready to listen and understand the situation and dharmatnya because he knows his duties perfectly shri ram tells mother sita whether in the forest or in ayodhya one thing is for sure i am the servant of the king called bharat bharat is the king i am the servant whether i am in the forest as a vanachari or whether i am a grihastha or whether i am in ayodhya wherever i am my duty my identity is i am representing bharat and my responsibility is to be his servant i hold this bow and arrow why do i hold this bow and arrow it is to be a servant of bharat i am always fighting and what is the purpose of this bow and arrow whenever i hear cry of surrender and helpless dependence my bow and arrow function automatically to cause satisfaction in the heart of the surrendered soul this is my dharma my dharma is to take away the suffering of others i suffer when i see others go through suffering i cannot see the suffering of others then shri ramchandra said i can renounce my brothers i can renounce you i can renounce my whole kingdom i can renounce all my opulences i can even give up this life for others this is how much uh, the suffering of others influences my life so the dharma for uh, for shri ram is sakrid eva prapanno yastava asmi iti sayachate abhayam sarvada tasmai dadami etad vratam mama when vibhishana surrendered shri ramachandra said anyone who comes to me irrespective of whoever they are with suffering with helpless desperate surrender they tell me oh sri ram from today i am yours <coughs> then my kodanda i being kodanda pani my bow and arrow is always there to protect such a devotee so therefore it is interesting that at that point sri ramachandra says even if ravana surrenders i will accept him and then somebody could ask well if the kodanda is so powerful the bow and arrow of ram is so powerful then one arrow of ram should be enough to kill ravan why did it take so many <laughs> ram was hitting and then one head would fall and another head and then another head and another head why did that happen oh that is also the mixing of gunavan viryavan and dharmajnya all three qualities put together why the viryavan nature of shri ram he wanted more and more fight because if ram is if ravan is dead then the fight is over so that's the viryavan nature of ram but the gunavan nature of ram and the dharmatnya nature of shri ram dharmatnya uh, of seeing the suffering of ravan ramchandra was thinking let me give him one more head maybe with that head he may surrender to me and he shot uh, and the head came back again thinking that this head may surrender to me but then that head was also nasty then ram shot down and then another head grew ram he could have finished but this is the gunavan viryavan and dharmatnya nature mixing together shri ramachandra is 
um, feeling that maybe he will have a change of mind maybe his he will have better brain substance maybe he will have the head to surrender to me maybe this head will fall at my feet but unfortunately uh, ravana had many heads but no brains many brains but no heart so therefore shri ramchandra thought okay <laughs> if head is not working i will shoot and do heart surgery directly and then then he shot and kodanda pani shri ram became very victorious in this way this is the uh, the the nature of shri ram he is gunavan dharmajnya and he is viryavan also very 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 powerful very very powerful and the devotees are also like that they are also viryavan the devotees of the lord are also like that anybody who remember shri ram he also becomes viryavan <laughs> viryavan shila prabhupad used to say that uh, Uh, devotees in krishna consciousness they should have the courage of a british fighter a british soldier and the heart of a bengali mother which means vajradapi kathoram kusmadapi sukomalam ramchandra's devotees they take the gunavan aspect in serving society dharmajnya aspect in serving the vaishnavas and following proper vaishnava etiquette and the viryavan aspect in fighting opposition deviations fighting material nature so therefore shrila prabhupada explains in our heart we should be like a bengali mother but in our spirit of fight we should be like a courageous british soldier even after the juhu fight shrila prabhupada said that was a very good fight it was a good fight it was a it was a good fight shrila vishwana chakravarti thakur also gives the example very similar <clears throat> um now we are because we are talking about shri ram's valor khara dushana ravana all of them Shri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says it is like a cub, a, a lion cub. You see, a lion cub, the size is only small. It is so small. But when it looks at a elephant, the lion cub inside has an elephant of courage to pull down the elephant. It starts roaring. Its size is only so much. But it is roaring on the power of the lion. It knows if the elephant comes close, the father is there. so in this way we can understand that the living entity the devotees of shri ram they take that quality of viryavan and they become cubs themselves and they roar the holy name of ram they roar ram katha shrunvan ram katha nadam konu yantim param gatim it is the roaring of ram katha so the cub represents a ram bhakta the roaring of a cub represents ram katha and ram naam the lion here represents shri ramachandra himself and the elephant represents any form of material energy any form of uh, maya shakti so if we roar uh, and fight material nature on the power of our father then however big the elephant is the elephant will have to come down dead maam eva ye prapadhyante mayam etam tarantite so in this way uh, shri ramachandra is uh, gunavan viryavan and dharmajnya as far as kritajnya satyavakyam drida vrata whenever another opportunity arises shri ramachandra arranges at that time we can discuss by hearing these qualities of shri ram our heart should melt our heart which is like a stone should melt by the lotus feet of these qualities so that the stone like heart can melt and the ahalya of bhakti can come out and offer ourselves to shri ram on this navami tithi shri ram thank you for coming into this material world thank you for performing such beautiful wonderful pastimes you didn't have to go through whatever you went through there was no astrology on you there is no effect of planets on you it is your swaichha swaichha being completely swatantra you went through all of these beautiful wonderful pastimes of union and separation only so that all of us who are separated from you can be united with you by hearing your sweet wonderful qualities and pastimes by worshiping your form and by chanting your holy names in the association of your devotees vanchha kalpatru drashtra prasandu bhyai vacha patitanam pavanibhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha